Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be going over how to migrate your project to 2.0. 2.0 comes with a ton of changes, and we can view them all in the PSDK info channel if you just click here. And if we scroll up a little bit right here, we're going to see the studio changes which has a ton of new features. One of the biggest ones being a huge push towards getting the users to use Tiled over RPG Maker XP. Another big change was allowing users to handle the translations of all the text and stuff in Studio. They added some more Portuguese, Spanish, and German localizations. Some more shortcuts like being able to access different database pages and being able to quickly save. You can do some more customization for trainers, which will allow you to change like the, def the defeat and the victory battle music and some other stuff. You can now manage the Pokemon's cries from the uh, from the resource tab. You can also change the word that's used when you get multiple of a specific item and some other pretty cool stuff. So definitely look into this, but there was also a big update with PSDK as now PSDK is now in version 26.21, which has a ton of new implementations of new abilities and you know stuff that came in with uh, Scarlet and Violet and some other stuff. Some new features like being able to do like the, the Whirlpool system tag, the Puddle system tag, and some other stuff that you'll learn about when we go over mapping soon. There's a whole new demo that shows you how to do like a ton of things whenever you create a new project, which I 100% encourage everybody to do. That if you previously had a project, it's just a good idea to create a new one so that you can see how to do all, all these new things. If you really want to learn how to do literally anything possible, like the demo shows you how to do so much. We'll, we'll cover the actual demo at some point. We'll cover how to like actually utilize the demo um, and how to play it as well, so don't worry. If you scroll down even more, you're gonna actually notice that there's been some updates with the demo. So how this is gonna work is, if you ever see that there's an update with the technical demo and there's something that you wanna try out, you're gonna have to just create a new project as the projects are gonna constantly keep the demo updated, but there's no way for them to update an already existing projects demo. So you would have to create a new one and just try it out from there. All right, so let's get started with preparing ourselves before we actually migrate, which is just gonna be pushing something to our GitHub. If you haven't versioned your project yet, I highly, highly encourage that you do. I've made a video covering how to do it. Just watch it. it. It really is not overly complicated. I think I went into pretty good detail on how to do it and how to set it up. So again, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a push before we do our migration. So this is just gonna be push before migration, commit, push that to the origin. If you go to history, you're gonna see that you've just pushed something. It's gonna have no changes here. And that means that any changes from this point on are changes that happened from us migrating. So this will make things that are typically irreversible be reversible. So if something goes wrong with our migration, we can undo it just in case. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go over here and we need to type in Pokemon Studio until it appears and then right click it and do uninstall and then go down to Pokemon Studio and uninstall <laughs> version 1.4.3. As you can see, I didn't previously do this. It didn't cause any issues, but it's just excess information, excess data that just doesn't need to be there. So you're supposed to do this. So make sure that you uninstall 1.4.3 before you install the new version. Once you've uninstalled it, go to the description of this video and you're gonna get to a GitHub link that's gonna be for the Pokemon Studio releases. And all you need to do is click on the Pokemon Studio Setup 2.0.1 EXE and download this to wherever you want. Personally, I download mine in my downloads folder. And once it's done, you just want to run this. I'm going to click more info and do run anyways. Do whichever version you want. You can do it for anyone who uses this computer, which would be for all users. Personally, I'm the only one on this computer. I'm the only user, um, so I'm only going to install it for me, but it's up to you on what you want to do. And then once you get to this, just click finish. And so now what you should see is, honestly, you shouldn't see any of these. You should only see just the four squares because if you're launching Studio 2.0.1, as it should say in the top right, you shouldn't have any of your recent projects as it shouldn't be able to detect any of the old projects that you've had. If it doesn't show version 2.0.1 here, or if it is showing old recent projects, I did have a situation when I initially installed Studio where I had to install it twice so that it would launch the proper one. But that was also because I didn't uninstall the original one. So I think if you uninstalled the first one, you shouldn't run into this issue. But if you are, maybe just try installing Studio again and then it should work properly. 
Again, just look for that version 2.0.1 in the top right. So now that we've updated Studio, it's time to migrate our project. We're gonna go on Open Project and we are gonna go to our project. And we're just gonna click on the project.studio. And as you can see, it's saying migrating to version 2.0. And now it's loading everything. Here, we're gonna be prompt with a very crucial question, okay? I want you to click use RPG Maker XP for now until I make my use tiled video. Just because if you click use tiled, you're not gonna be able to revert back to using RPG Maker XP. But if you click use RPG Maker XP, you can convert to tiled later. So for now, until I make that video, I think it's just easier for me to tell people to use RPG Maker XP. And then once we end up making that tiled video, I'll show you how to switch over. So for now, just click use RPG Maker XP. And then you should have this Pokemon SDK update over here and just make sure that you update this as well. And now you should be able to go into your database and you should see that anything that you had previously created should still be here. So for instance, Chaos Cloud should still be here, which it is. Any of the Pokemon that you had previously added, all of that stuff should still be there. None of that is getting deleted. None of it's getting overwritten. Because the thing about these things is when you migrate or update your project, it's never adding in new content directly to your stuff that's gonna like overwrite something that you've done. Like none of the CSVs are getting overwritten and none of like the JSON data files that you're making through Studio are obviously getting deleted in the process. So now that we've migrated, I just wanna make sure that when I launch the game, that it says that it's the right version, which it doesn't actually. As you see here, we're actually running 26.20, but if you see here, we should be running 26.22. Now, if you remember from my versioning video, I said that we are basically running a local version of PSDK. And since we're running a local version of PSDK, that means that we're gonna have to manually update our PSDK, which we do in GitHub Desktop. So we're just gonna go back over here and we are gonna go to PSDK to Tuto and we are gonna go to the PSDK Tuto Pokemon SDK or whatever you named yours. And here, we're just gonna do pull origin which is gonna update our release branch. And then we're gonna go back to our Tuto project. And then we're going to go back into Studio. We're gonna launch Studio, and we're gonna see that now we are running 26.22 and that our project is running perfectly fine. If that is happening for you, then I encourage you to finally push this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do migration to 2.0 complete. And then we're gonna commit this to main. This is gonna take a while. As you can see up here, it's a ton of files. And once it's done, we're just going to do push. And so now, if we ever really needed to, we can always right click here and we can revert our changes in this commit or we can even check out an older commit. That's really all it takes to update the 2.0. Hopefully this video helped you guys seamlessly migrate the 2.0 and I'll see you guys next time.